Today we're going to Italy, and I'm even going to get there in my jammies. Come on, let's get going. Oh, and you won't even need a mask. Ciao! <laughs> this is the closest thing I have to an Italian hat. <laughs> hey there! Welcome back to the channel. My name's Steve, and today we're going to go to Vernazza, Italy in the Cinque Terre, courtesy of my favorite virtual tour channel, Pro Walk Tours. Now, if you're not familiar with what a walking tour channel is, well, it's basically <laughs> just what the name says. The viewer gets to walk around the city or town, anywhere really that the channel takes you to, wherever in the world that might be. My favorite channel by far has been Pro Walk Tours. The link to his channel will be down in the description. The founder of the channel, Isaac, concentrates on places in Europe and seems to specialize, at least lately, in places around Italy. He's got a lot of subscribers and so apparently <laughs> I'm not the only one who loves to walk around places that I'll probably never visit. I'll put on one of his videos while I'm painting in the studio and let it play in the background. Some can be more than three hours just walking around showing you the sights. Here's a little tip. If you turn on the closed captioning, you're going to be rewarded with subtitles that's going to tell you about the town or even the building that you're looking at. It's sort of a mini history lesson. I'll put this on in the corner of my screen as I paint and watch out of the corner of my eye. It makes me feel less isolated. But hey, even my 85-year-old father-in-law, who does love to travel, but obviously hasn't been able to do that since all these crazy lockdowns started, and is getting to the age where it's just too hard on him to be out there with all the other tourists jostling him around, well, he also loves to sit and watch the video tours. So as you can tell, I'm a big fan of this channel. Well, I decided that I'd like to do a watercolor sketch from one of his videos, so I sent an email explaining who I am and asking permission to do a video where I do a sketch from one of his videos. It didn't take long. I got back the nicest email encouraging me to go on ahead. So here we are. Uh, let me take off my hat. <laughs> Before I go any further, let me tell you what the ground rules are when working from someone else's photos or video, as I understand them. And God knows I am not a copyright lawyer. But if you follow these rules, you won't go too far wrong. First and foremost, you need to ask permission to use their photo or video as reference. Now, it's not just a good idea. It's the law. It is their intellectual property and you don't have any right to it without their permission. Now, having said that, I do believe that you can use any photo or video to draw from if you're just using it as reference to practice, let's say in your sketchbook, and you don't have any intention of reselling the resulting art and representing it as your own. Got it? Use it to draw or paint, but don't sell it. Also, if you do post it, always, always, always give the photographer credit. It can be something as simple as artwork created from an original photograph or video by so-and-so. It's imperative that you give credit where credit's due. You can use a photo and video to create artwork from and resell it if you get written permission from the creator of the original image. I do believe that permission can come from an email. It's just like needing to get a signed model release if you're photographing someone that you intend to paint. Now, Having said that, I did get permission, and I'm going to send the original watercolor sketch that I do today to Isaac as a gift, because I want him to know how much I appreciate his hard work and his channel, and how it's kept me and mine connected to the outside world. Hopefully he'll sell it and help to defray the cost of his channel. I really do hope so. If you follow the link in the description to Pro Walk Tours and choose to subscribe, hey, let him know how you found his channel. That would be much appreciated for sure. So, let me get my Italian racing gloves and go over and get started on this sketch. Let's go. Thank you. 
All right, well, now that we got through the initial drawing, I'm gonna start uh, inking this over in an area that's maybe not as prominent until I kinda get that feeling in my hands and I'm a little more confident. I'm over by the area where the train comes in once every hour and uh, I'll work up into the hills here. Uh, and uh, <laughs> living dangerously, I just went ahead and, and did this church spire here. But honestly, <laughs> It's, it's not that complicated, so I'm not really risking all that much. Uh, and, you know, one of the things that I will tell you about this technique is it's better to be a little bit, you know, looser and have some uh, not being super tight on this. The, the, the less tight you are as the painting goes along, uh, the more you're going to be rewarded with that feeling of uh, it just being done on the spot, off the cuff, and uh, it has more of a charm about it i guess i'll say perfection is definitely not what we're going with here we're going to go with the impression of uh the vernazza not the uh, actual um satellite photo so even if you mess up uh you can claim that uh, you know that's your style that's what you were going for just as long as you're consistently inconsistent you'll be just fine I'll go ahead and pop this reference back up there so that you see that I am not uh, in any way being exact about this, but you, you're getting the feeling of, uh, of the town without being a slave to the reference. And honestly, that's what helps to make it art in the end. As I said uh, when I first started using the pen, the ink that I'm using is Noodler's Lexington Gray. And even though it looks black here on screen, it actually is a, a really pleasant gray color. And, you know, it doesn't intrude nearly as much as black does. Uh, so uh, I love the Noodler's Lexington Gray, and it's absolutely waterproof. So you don't have to worry about, once you start adding your watercolor over the top, having it smear around the way some of the other Noodler's uh, inks can, like Heart of Darkness or even the Noodler's Black. Uh, which is supposed to be bulletproof, but if you have too much ink <laughs> on your paper, it will smear around because it hasn't bonded to the uh, to the pulp of the paper. And then once I finish the drawing, and I'm sure that the ink is dry, which usually doesn't take long, I go over it with an EDD eraser or some other type of eraser and get rid of all those pencil lines. I decided to go ahead and add some pencil lines on the outside so I was absolutely sure where the edge of this was. Then I went in and soaked the paper, the watercolor paper, uh, for uh, five minutes and then I took it over to the board and stapled it down. You let it dry. Sometimes I'll let it dry overnight, um, usually a few hours. If you just touch the paper and you feel that it's, it's not cold anymore to your touch, then it's dry and you can go ahead and get started painting. In full disclosure here, I haven't done a watercolor in a little while, so I went a little wild <laughs> with pre-spraying it and putting down a lot of liquid, a lot of liquid, so I didn't need to go quite this heavy with the water, and given the chance to do it again, uh, I wouldn't use quite this much, but um, uh, I was uh, careful in the back part of the, uh, of the water here that you see um, that's mostly ultramarine and then as you get closer it gets a little a uh, little more cerulean and then I've added some yellow into that to change the color as that uh, water gets uh, shallower and uh, you get some of the influence of that sand coming up through and so after it's dry then I go ahead and get started on the back uh, those cliffs back there I will mix in some brown and then some uh, some gray to help to kind of have warms and cools going on and it makes uh, things a little more interesting rather than just putting one color down or the other. Something you hear me talk about all the time, mixing your warms and cools, keep your values close together and as that uh, as the brown of the cliffs goes farther away then you take more of that brown out and just have it more gray. And then as it comes towards you, you can add in more of, of the brown and less of the gray. Uh, you know, normally I talk about what I'm working on right at the beginning, but um, 
For right now I'm working on Fluid 100 cold press finish watercolor paper. It's uh, acid free. It's 140 pound or 300 GSM. I love it. It's my favorite watercolor paper. I know there are a lot of more expensive papers, uh, but I tend to like this one the best. <laughs> and as you can tell, it allows me to work a little sloppy on this and it still is very controllable. <laughs> So if you're interested, I'll go ahead and put a link to it down. Uh, everything that I'm using here today, I'll make sure that you can find a link down in the description and uh, use it uh, and get some if you want to. And this is the spot in the video that I will definitely not ask you uh, to consider subscribing or uh, <laughs> hitting the notification bell or uh, liking because that would really help the channel. I will uh, definitely not ask you to do that. Now that area up there in the uh, in the corner, I, those little horizontal squiggly lines, that's where the vineyards are. A lot of the family vineyards uh, in the area are up there and they do a lot of terrace uh, vineyard farming. So if you like wine, that's your place. Now I'm gonna go ahead and finish up this uh, hillside here, but I'm not gonna go back into the back ones yet. I wanna get going on putting some tone into all of these different buildings and rooftops. So I'll start with a yellow and, uh, and a pink and a little bit of a blue, and I'll let them merge into each other. So it's just basically a very light wash just to get rid of the white of the canvas. Uh, we wanna kill that white as much as we can. There I am adding in some, and this is just kind of random. I know that there's one area there that is either the stone wall or you've got shadows and things like that. So uh, I do kind of pay attention to that, but it's, it's not essential. And then I'll go in uh, now and uh, a lot more carefully make sure that I put in the, sh the shadows on the side of the building so we get the feeling of where that light is coming from. Obviously, since the, the light is coming from the upper left-hand side, we'll add shadows to the back sides of the buildings and to the right side. Uh, and, uh, you know, the light isn't getting down in between those streets. And so I make sure that there's, uh, there's shadows down in there. Now the break wall and the sand. I chose not to go ahead and mask off those little boats, so I'm just going to do some gouache highlights with some white, and uh, that's going to help me along where you see the, uh, the waves coming into the rocks there. That's going to soften that area up a little bit. Get to do my, some of my spattering, and um, I will continue to, uh, to work this gouache in until I get a nice soft edge that I'm looking for. Usually it takes a couple of coats. I don't like to use it really opaque, just kind of mildly opaque at first. And uh, since it's uh, water soluble, you can continue to work into it. No problem at all. Getting to the fun part, now I'm gonna go on and, and start adding some color to these buildings. This is a very colorful town. <laughs> they have just about any color you can imagine on the side of their, of their buildings. But uh, you know, as long as you randomly put in some uh, different colors, you know, I'm going to do the pinks and I'm going to do purples and oranges and yellows and blues and just kind of intersperse them. They don't have to be one and one. In other words, you can put two blue houses next to each other. Uh, just so you get a nice uh, harmonious balance. You don't want any of your colors like the pink to be so much brighter than any of your other colors. You want them kind of about the same value and the same uh, intensity uh, of chroma. And the watercolors that I'm using are always uh, Daniel Smith. I just find that for me, I, I love his colors. I love how some of them granulate. And uh, on, on these buildings, I don't want them to be so absolutely overpowering in color. Uh, I want them to look a little bit of uh, sun bleached as it is. I'll, I'll keep the intensity down, but uh, you know me, I gotta, I gotta spatter. It's, it's in my DNA. So when I need a nice white area and the gouache isn't doing it for me, uh, I'll take a jelly roll pen and uh, fill in those boats. I'm not going to put any color in them. I just want them to, to be there, just the general shape of a boat. Um, I don't want to attract uh, your attention too much. And then I can also go ahead and add in a little bit of highlight on the sides of, of the cliff 
and I can put in some uh, some of the waves that are crashing up on the shore. It, it really is uh, nice and helpful. If you find that it's not working very well for you, it's possible that, that your jelly roll pan is old. Uh, they do kind of dry out and uh, they become hard to, to use. So if you get one and it's not working right for you, after you try and clean out the tip and it's not working, it's possible that it was just sitting on the, uh, on the shelf so long that it, it lost its ability to come out of the pen the way you need it to. So try a different pen. This is my next to the last stage. I'll work my way around adding in any of the details that I want and then I'll take and I will go back to my brush and I'll start uh, finding little areas where I can I can put a little zing in. Uh, I like to put little uh, dots here and there. Uh, kind of like sp controlled spattering. And so I go in and I pop things off that I think need to, to have a little bit more uh, contrast to them so that they're reading more like they're in sunlight. This is the stage where the painting really comes to life for me. Uh, I make sure that I go in and I keep working on uh, areas until I feel like it's done and I don't have anything else to fix. As you can see, this is a style that gives you a lot of freedom. Allow yourself to relax, just have some fun. And thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate it. And as always, I'll see you down the road. Thank you.